17 yards on yeah. the ground so yeah. far. Because you know why? They, they rely on their defense. And this is one of the best defenses in all of college football. We've talked about it. But it always starts with the running game. Kamani Bidell didn't really have it going in the first quarter. The second order, second quarter, yes, the point of emphasis was ordering him the football, getting the football to Vidal. Two touchdowns in that second quarter really sparked the scoring for Troy. And when it comes to App State, offensively, it was the big catch by Strowman that really got things going. Without that catch, I don't know if they score that touchdown, but Kanye Roberts not being denied, and that's where we stand right now, 14-7, Troy. So App State will get the ball to start this second half. Zach Long walking off the steps, getting set to boot it away to Milan Tucker. Can App State build off of that momentum? After scoring their first touchdown at the end of that first half, Tucker trying to find a crease, and he won't get to the 20. Let's take a look at our game track, delivered by Papa John's. All right, Kirk, what stands out for you? Uh, to me, it's the rushing yards by App State. They don't have any. Basically, just 25. And you look at Troy, you already mentioned it. This is how Troy plays the game. They want to rush the football and stop you, choke you on the rushing game, but also put you in some opportunities on third down that just have not been there for App State. Troy had 15 rush yards in the first quarter, over 100 in the second. See if Joey Aguilar can get on track. On first down, they go to the ground and stuffed. Nothing doing. Stormy, what'd you get at the half? Well, I talked to app head coach Sean Elliott, and you talk about the run game for Troy. He said it would probably help our cause if we could stop that running back a little bit, get it, get him on the ground. But he told me he challenged his players, what do you want your legacy to be? He said that this is how do you want to be remembered? What do you want your legacy to be? And all of his players, for them, this is your moment. And in terms of this offense, he said for his quarterback, Joey Aguilar, Man coverage has been beating them since the first quarter. They've got to figure out something there to get this mo offense moving and put some pressure on Troy Z. Well, he delivers a strike there to Caden Robinson. He took a shot throwing it, but they pick up 13. Yeah, they got to push the ball more down the field. They didn't do that enough, I thought, in the first half. So Aguilar getting the ball out of his hands quickly or getting him on the move and get the ball up the field. No huddle on the ground. Kanye Roberts, and he will fall forward, picks up four. This is a big drive here for App State. What do they do at halftime in order to make the adjustments against a stingy Troy defense? You can see the momentum change in that first half after that touchdown by App State. Can they carry it over to the second half? Second and six, back onto the ground. Get off me! What a run by Kanye Roberts. A 15-yard scamper. And here's the offense starting to pick up for the Mountaineers. Yeah, there's some guys who don't miss tackles too often. It looks like that was Javon Solomon. He's the first team all-conference Sunbelt. He doesn't miss too many tackles. And that time resulted in a big play for App State. Oh, App. Troy's not going to miss that one. Jaden McDonald, a tackle for no gain. You don't see that, right? This is the best rushing defense in the Sunbelt. They miss a tackle. You say, oh, man, things are happening. And they come right back and they stuff one at the line of scrimmage. Well, this is what we saw in the first part of the season for Troy. Their defense was missing tackles all over the place. That's why they started the season one and two. Del Pettis told us, in practice, we added more tackling periods. We got our confidence up, and the whole season changed. Yeah, it was still about building chemistry. So many new players on defense this season. Aguilar throwing over the middle. A nice grab by Robinson. Went up and got it. Another first down, pick it up 14. Well, you got to go to your superstars. And the superstar for App State is number two, Caden Robinson. 53 catches coming in to the game. And it's about feeding the guy who you trust the most. And that's Caden Robinson. Now Robinson limping off the field. And looks like they're going to take a look at him. He is their best wide receiver. They cannot afford to lose him in this game. Man, he was chopped down, went high for that football, and was tackled and went down to the ground. Aguilar checks down to his tight end, David Lorkins, a big load to bring down. He's got six on first down. Keyshawn Swanson missed the initial tackle. Yeah, a couple of easy throws for Aguilar. 
get the ball out quickly. That, I think that's what this half is about, getting the ball out of Aguilar's hands quickly. Ball on the Troy, 31. Noel. He picks up two, will make it third and short coming up. This has to be four down territory. I wouldn't be surprised if they put this ball in the air, right? Frank Ponce, the deep, the offensive coordinator for App State, hope if he gets the green light, I think you try to take a shot down the field. Knowing if you don't get it, fourth down, you've got an opportunity to go for it. Wide receiver for App State, Caden Robinson back on the field. Third and one, Noel cuts. And he's got enough. Brought down at the 25 by Swanson. <laughs> what a statement drive to come out to start this third quarter. Yeah, and they leaned on there. First team all conference guys, the center Isaiah Helms 54 and Bucky Williams 62. That's where you run. You run behind the right side and behind that center. They get you the tough yards that you need for the first. First and 10 from the 25. Roberts to the right side. And he's got some space. Brought down inside the 10. Troy got the run game going in the second quarter. And App State's feeling it here in the third. This is about the blocking. Terrific blocking by App State. They're leaning on this offensive line now. They didn't do that in the first half, but they continue with Bucky Williams. I mentioned the first team on Sun Belt Conference guard. He's been leading the way. A gain of 19, first and goal from the six. They go back to Roberts. Another big hole, and he's in there. Touchdown, App State. A six yard run by Kanye Roberts, and we're an extra point away from tying it up. It starts with the vision. The vision is watching Thornton Gentry. He's back in the game. Remember, he went out earlier, but watch his block. He just caves everything down. And the vision by Roberts to see that, hey, there's nobody behind my tackle. And that's where he races into the end zone straight. You hit your head on the goalpost knowing you got an opportunity from an outstanding offensive line blocking up front. His last season, Troy, had their best year in FBS history. They went one and two, rattled off 11 straight wins to win the Sun Belt Championship. They are trying to repeat that this year as the kick goes in. that right now his sixth year he's changed his body in the offseason guys see how dedicated to him he's one of the leaders on this team and they feel like instead of just being an operator out there managing the game he can go win it for them yeah I think last year he was just just joining the group project and getting the grade this year he's adding more he's bringing more they're winning games like you mentioned because first and ten Watson throws the screen to read Barber and Andrew he will have enough for a first down, pushed out of bound by Johnson, a pickup of 11. Well, let's think about what App State is going to do. They're and then if you get one-on-ones on the outside, you take those numbers. You get it out to Barber, let him make one guy miss, and you've got a big play. What does App State do? Do they take away Vidal or go one-on-one -on, -one on the outside? Watson going downfield, making a play is Chris Lewis. There he goes! Chris Lewis! Nicely done, Delp had a stepping up for the Troy community. First and ten, Noel somehow still going. 
Uh, did he stop short of the 30, pick up a three? You know, watching Noel, every time he gets the football, you always think he could take it the distance. Just the consistency. See, it's one play, and then he's off the field. He's battled injuries all year, and that, to me, it slowed down the offense at times. Roberts down the backfield on second and seven. Aguilar, quick throw to the outside. He completes it right at the stick with Makai Jackson. How does App State answer, right? They come out of half, they score a touchdown, and then what happens? Troy comes back, they answer. So it's now, it's who's going to hold serve, right? It's just back and forth. Third and one on the ground, and Troy is up to the task. Nothing doing. Luis Medina was right there on the spot. Yeah, playing funky Cole Medina, right? Over there, just making sure he moving guys out of the way and just taking up two, get a push back and make a play. He knocked the tight end back, David Larkins, and it forces the fourth down. So the punt team is out there for the Mountaineers. The third three and out for App State tonight. Blake wants this one away to Jabri Barber. He has to back up inside the 20. He muffed it. Ball on the turf. Who's got it? And a penalty flag. Milan Tucker comes away with the rock. Let's see what this flag is for. Rolling on the field was a muff kick recovered by the kicking team for a first down. By the kicking team, so App State football, but you throw in maybe the penalty with a little extracurricular at the end that backs them up 15 yards. But you see the right now. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, kicking team number 42. 15-yard penalty, first down. So Barber muffed the punt. The wide receiver for App State on special teams, Milan Tucker, got on top of it. But then Christian Johnstone, the long snapper, he's called for the penalty. And we cannot talk about the weather enough. This rain is still coming down. It's not a driving rain, but it's still a little misty out there. And trying to catch that football with all hands is going to be difficult. And you see Barber right there not being able to secure that, that punt. You got to credit Mitchell Lake, too. I mean, it was a booming punt. It forced Barber to retreat. And now App State, they get it back. Ball on the Troy, 24. The toss to Roberts over the right side. He rumbles for a good gain into the red zone. Picks up six. Nice tight formation. Everybody in close. That's a real run formation, right? Get everybody nice inside of the numbers, and they're just trying to run at this Troy defense. Robert stays in the backfield. They fake the handoff. Second and four, taking a shot. Overthrowing everybody is Aguilar incomplete. Third down here, third and five. You want to cash this in with a touchdown, right? You get an opportunity, a mistake made by Troy. You got to cash this in with a touchdown. You don't want the field goal. If it, you get the field goal, that's fine. But this throw has to be somewhere that gets you five yards. What's been the best play that I've seen from App State? It's been that, what, eight to nine yard out route where Aguilar gets the football, takes the snap, and throws it in rhythm and in time. Caden Robinson has been the beneficiary of that particular play. Robinson, the best receiver at the top of the screen. Aguilar looking right, checks down to the tight end. Eli Wilson, he stretches across to make sure he's got that first down. A gain of five. They put Reddy Stewart in sort of a pickle. He's going to be on the left side of your screen. He's the cornerback. And he sees a receiver coming open late, but the tight end is down underneath with the check down. Eli Wilson, so he's able to catch it, know where he's at, extend the football for the first down. But you had the corner steward who had an opportunity that could have came up and stopped Wilson before he gained the first. 
So a new set of downs, first and 10 from the 13. Aguilar crossing route. That one was tipped at the line of scrimmage. They were trying to find Christian Horn cutting across the middle. Those are always dangerous throws when you get this deep into opponent's territory, a little mesh route. So you got two receivers going opposite directions across the middle of the field. Nice job getting a hand up by this rush. Second and ten on the ground. Roberts, he is pushed back. A loss of two. A.J. Pierce got the penetration. It's always easy when you don't get blocked. <laughs> and I don't know how you don't block some of these guys. <laughs> right before the snap, nobody blocks Pierce. He's just standing there. He's waiting. The ball snap. He just go runs. He runs down the running back. It's a difficult task to block these guys up front. But when you just let them run free, that's tackles for loss, and now you're third and 12. They need to get to the three for a first down. Aguilar, empty backfield. He's being chased, and they got him! Javon Solomon, his 15th sack on the season. He's got nine sacks in the last four games. <laughs> you better bring help. Bring help. This is the first team all-conference. Just watch him. He's right here. You need help, you better get an extra running back, a tight end, help out. Because you go one-on-one -on -one with the best defender for Troy. This is what happens. That's a big sack by the first team, all Sun Belt Conference defensive end, Javon Solomon. So Michael Hughes, after the 41-yard field goal, kicks this one away. All right, let's check out this week's college football playoff rankings. Brought to you by AT&T. So Washington took care of business yeah. last night. They yep. stay undefeated. Georgia, they're in a fight right now. They in a dog fight with the dog with the uh, with the Crimson Crimson Tide. Washington's already took care of business. They understood their assignment. Ohio State, we know Idol. Texas understood their assignment. So they're just waiting. They're sitting back waiting. They're big Louisville fans tonight, right? They want the Cardinals to take care of business. Hopefully, that's a path to get the Longhorns into that top four. All right, we may have to revisit that at some point because <laughs> I got some questions for you about what could happen today. Watson on first down, scanning, checks down to Barber. Barber lowers his head, and he is stopped immediately. Okay, so if Georgia loses, correct, and if Florida State loses, how does that shake things up in the playoff picture? Okay, now you're asking me way too many questions right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, that puts Texas in. We it's always it. hard to play with a team that's idle, though, right? Ohio State's idle this week. So kind of tough. Watson, hand to his face. Nothing called. And look at that head coach John Summerall running. We saw it from up here. Thomas Davis clearly hit Watson. No flag. This is a mistake, a missed play by that official. And Summerall is livid. He is beside himself. And rightfully so. And that's right there in the face mask. Oh, yeah. That's missed by oh, the yeah. official. Oh, yeah. Watson. Throws that one out of bounds, and here's the penalty flag. Maybe a makeup call? <laughs> Maybe, but that was a missed call by the officials, and you got to play to the next play. And I'm wondering, what does the official see on this one? Pass interference. Defense number 19. Automatic first down at the spot of the five. People forget that John Summerall was a linebacker at Kentucky. That old <laughs> linebacker came out right there, right? That old linebacker, look at he's still fired up. He's ready to go. <laughs> so that's the second pass interference called against Ethan Johnson. Summerall still getting his steps yeah, in. He's ready to go, man. Look at he is fired up. All right, coach. Now you got to move on, all right? Play's already done. Now you move on to the next play. 
Can't let your emotions get a penalty on you now. Troy at their own 35, first and 10. Vidal patiently waiting, but nothing open. Montez Kelly bringing him down. That's the way to fight a double team. Montez Kelly right in the middle of that defense. Fights off a guy and then knocks it down. That, that's a huge play on first down. For the, anytime you can stop Vidal on first down, that's a win. Right in the middle of that defense, he's trying to he's double team. Fights right through it. They go back to Vidal, tries to bounce it, now back to the middle. And there is just no room for him to run. Caden Sullivan eventually bringing him down. So now you get to third down, the money down. This is where you rely on Gunnar Watson to have to make the play, to make the play to keep the chains moving. And on the opposite side, how sticky and stingy can this defense for App State be? Do they bring pressure? Do they drop back? The Trojans have to get to the 45. Watson going downfield, incomplete, a ton of contact. Lewis tried to reel it in with one hand. That was Johnson again. He could have been called for his third P.I. <laughs> Ethan Johnson, they've been going after number 19. And that time, that incomplete. Troy only rushes, I mean, App State only rushes three, but That's this a lot is a lot of, of jersey tugging. A lot of hand fight, and I think it's going back and forth. So good job by the officials of saying, hey, both guys are jockeying for position. A good no call on that one. Cole punts it away. And Robinson backs away from it. A little check up and settle right at the 22. All right, tonight, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ABC. Number 14, Louisville takes on number 4, Florida State. They will battle it out for the ACC championship game. And if Florida State loses, a lot of things could change in terms of the playoff picture. Woo, you talking about chaos? Yeah, that's what chaos will be. And I know what I'll be doing at noon Eastern tomorrow. i got my eyes. It's always a day that I have to always set a reminder, not just because we'll find out who's in the, the New Year's Six Bowls and also the playoff four, but remember to set your fantasy rosters because you can forget from that time. <laughs> Under two minutes to play in this third quarter with Aguilar rolling out. He finds a wide open Caden Robinson. And Robinson will be pushed out of bounds at the 39. Pick up 17. That 10 to 12 yard out route has been there for them all game. But I keep preaching it. Getting Aguilar on the move, right? Getting him outside the pocket. Allowing him time to make that play happen. If it's not there, getting positive yards. Nice job and nice adjustment there by Frank Ponce, the offensive coordinator. Well, I've been impressed with Aguilar's poise and something early on where they said he didn't win the starting job is because he wasn't making good decisions early. Right. But he has the kind of mentality where if he makes a mistake, it doesn't matter. He's able to just wipe it off, go to the next play. Yeah, Joey California, what they call him, and then Joey Cool today. Goes right back to Robinson, and to your point, Kirk, that route's been open all night. That's the one. <laughs> I keep, if you're Troy, why not go press that route? If Caden Robinson beats me over the top, then he does, but I've got to go up and challenge him at the line of scrimmage. That's just been taking candy from a baby all day. Aguilar has thrown that play, the third and one, third and one. Who's going to make the play? Do you hand this ball off? I sure do. Final seconds here in this third quarter on third and one. They go with Noel spinning away. He is crunched, and it's going to be close. I was just about to say, he's, the spin move gets him right there, but that far side official seems to be just short. That mark seems to be just short. They got to bring out the chains. Nice job by Noel even making this. This is the end of the third quarter. <laughs> And watch the tight end, 87, Eli Wilson to get up. Uh oh, we got early movement. <laughs> oh, it's over now. Decision made for him. August Drews, number 89.